Hi, I'm Rick Clare, and it's great to be able to do this program on uh, KISS TV this evening. Really would like to thank Nick Poling and his crew for allowing uh, me to uh, send this special program up, which I'll tell you about in just a moment, which if you think it doesn't ever get really cold in Atlanta, uh, look at the uh, fountain on the rooftop garden here at, uh, at my particular complex where I live. Uh, ice is on there this morning, but you know, I'll tell you what, I'm out here in a sweater with my sleeves up this morning because the sun's out bright and uh, this will be gone here in, in a little bit because it's warming up rather nice uh, around 60 today. So, But uh, I, you know, it, it's so neat to be able to do this program on KISS TV. And first of all, I have to tell you the two things that I enjoy most about Atlanta, uh, about being here and making it easy to be here is one Facebook, which keeps us all connected and uh, keeps me from being uh, quite as homesick. And also uh, with KISS TV, Nick and the crew, uh, they're doing a great job. And now that they're live streaming, uh, I get to watch the basketball game and city council meetings and different things going on. So that's great fun and I really appreciate that. And Nick and to the entire KISS TV crew, keep up the good work. The reason for this program tonight uh, is kind of special. Uh, next weekend, I'm coming back to Union City for a special concert. And as you know, not only was KISS TV a part of my life, but music was a great part of my life also. And uh, I fell in love with the theater organ years and years ago. I remember back around 1964-65, I got a stereo system. Remember one of those, the lid lifts up and the, the speakers uh, fan out on the sides. And I got it for one particular reason. My parents got me the new album put out by the McCoys called Hang On Sloopy. And my great aunt, because she knew I was getting a turntable, bought me a, a, a 33 record of... Uh, theater organ music. This big organ was pictured on the front, the mighty Wurlitzer. And not only did I enjoy looking at that picture and with my interest in music, the sound of this thing was fantastic. So I've been in love with those uh, all of my life. And one of the real regrets about leaving uh, Union City was that just as I was leaving, uh, Dick and Linda Wilcox were starting the Firehouse Pipes and I only got to hear that organ once at a Christmas concert for about 10 minutes or so and so I'm really excited about uh, coming back and hearing a concert on it coming up this Friday evening and this program we're going to uh, let you introduce you to the organist who's going to be playing that concert Mr. Ken Double he lives here in Atlanta he uh, spent a lot of time in Indiana as a broadcaster for uh, professional and college basketball games Purdue basketball games and uh, so many of you will probably recognize him and his voice, uh, but he is a professional theater organ, organist, and he uh, also is the national president of the American Theater Organ Society. And uh, he's based here in Atlanta, plays organ at the uh, fabulous Fox Theater on the, the Mighty Mo organ, which is one of the largest theater organs in the country. But Ken will be in Union City this coming Friday evening at the Firehouse Pipes to present a benefit concert. Now the concert is going to benefit the Union City, Indiana Police Department, the K-9 unit, and also will go to, uh, funds will go to the uh, Preservation Society of Union City, which of course I support fully. So uh, those will be two great organizations benefiting from this concert. And you want to go to this concert, and especially because the Firehouse Pipes, I believe, is one of those special things uh, to come to Union City in a long time, and I think that it will develop into a real tourist attraction uh, in the area for the community, but also because Ken is a terrific theater organist, and this is a rare opportunity. In fact, the next night, Saturday night, he's playing a concert at, I believe it's still called the Hilbert Theater, uh, on the Circle in Indianapolis. So um, th this is a great opportunity to see a fabulous organist, very nice gentleman uh, that I met uh, at the, uh, uh, through Linda Wilcox uh, at one of the uh, meetings of the Atlanta chapter of the American Theater Organ Society. So uh, I I'm pleased to be able to, to introduce uh, Ken uh, to you. Hope you meet him. Uh, Linda and Dick Wilcox uh, are the ones who are introducing him to you in Union City, but he's no stranger to Union City. He's been there, as you will hear, uh, several times at Firehouse Pipes um, as they were getting that set up. So anyway, thanks to the Wilcoxes for bringing him to Union City. I look forward to hopefully seeing many of you at the concert and thanks to uh, Nick and the KISS TV crew for doing such a great job with all that they do and for allowing us the time to present this. Perhaps in the future uh, Nick and I can talk maybe we can do some shows from here in Atlanta. Live in a great neighborhood. I always <clears throat> I don't mean to brag about the neighborhood but one side of my apartment here where the patio is on the, the rooftop looks out towards the city and the other side 
is the exciting part, which is just a small community called the Old Fourth Ward, Inman Park, which is just like Union City, uh, kind of like Union City as we would envision it. So maybe we need to take a, a trip down there and look at some of the historic things and some of the restaurants and, and the areas that are developing down there. It's a beautiful area. So anyway, uh, I wish everybody happy holidays in, in Union City. Hope to see you around the Firehouse Pipes next week. And uh, thank you for joining us for this program. Now we'll take you to, to uh, Mr. Ken Double, the fantastic theater organist, who will be in Union City this coming Friday night. Be sure to get your tickets at the, uh, the Antique Mall or at the City Building or uh, just to go up to the Antique Mall and get a ticket. They're $10. Go to a great... Uh, uh, benefact beneficiaries here in the Union City area. So thank you. Have a good evening. And good evening and welcome back to KISS TV. I'm Rick Clear and it's great to be back on KISS TV. Um, it's been a long time. And listen to the music. And we're going to have a great show that you want to stay tuned for because the gentleman who you're only seeing is back now, Mr. Ken Double, is coming from Atlanta to Union City, Indiana at the end of this week to put on a benefit Christmas concert on the Firehouse Pipes organ. And trust me, when Ken sets down at an organ, you'll want to be in the room for that concert. We'll be back and talk to Ken and talk about Firehouse Pipes and theater organs in general as soon as we come back from this short message. So stay Stay tuned, we're going to be back home in Indiana. And welcome back. Uh, as I said, today we've got an exciting program for you. Uh, now you get to see the, the forward side of the gentleman who is our guest tonight, Mr. Ken Double, who has graciously invited us into his home. And we're going to get to hear his organ here in just a little bit. But uh, the Union City, uh, Ken is going to be here at the end of this week giving a benefit concert at the Firehouse Pipes. And I will tell you, this gentleman is one extraordinary theater organist. and. Uh, and he, he, he lives here in Atlanta now, and we had the opportunity to meet, but he also has Indiana connections, so going back to Indiana is not a big deal for you, is it? You, no, it's like going definitely home. back home again in Indiana. I've called Lafayette, Indiana, my musical home for a long time because of the long center for the performing arts, the Old Mars Theater there. Back in the uh, late 70s and into the 80s, I got involved with some people there. We put a pipe organ in the long center, and I've performed there annually since 1982. Used to play at the old Paramount Music Palace, the big pizza parlor that had the pipe organ in Indianapolis and I've been fortunate to play the dedication concerts at the Anderson Paramount Theater, uh, at the Warren Performing Arts Center on the Barton organ there and other places that have uh, uh, allowed me to pursue what for a long time was a secondary career, but now it's my primary way of uh, making a living. Okay, very good. And this is not going to be your first trip to Union City, Indiana, is either, no, is it? No, we've been to the uh, Wilcox House, and we've been to the Firehouse, uh, uh, and, and played, uh, uh, we've tried out the pipe organ. This mm -hmm. is going to be my first kind of formal performance on the organ, but uh, good for the Wilcoxes, and, and good for Dick, uh, for what they've done for the community in, in, in putting this wonderful instrument and making great use of this old fire station mm -hmm. building uh, as a community center and uh, it's just, uh, it's, uh, they've just done a wonderful thing and I'm really looking forward to this. And we're going to talk a little bit more about the organ and firehouse pipes a little bit, but um, the concert that you're going there to do is, tell us a little bit about that concert. It's coming up at the end of this week mm -hmm. on Friday evening, yes. I believe. And it is a fr yes, Friday night the 6th and uh, it is a benefit concert and I know part of the benefit, uh, part of the groups, uh, one of the groups that will benefit has to do with the canine uh, and, and mm -hmm. police uh, 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 working with the dogs and, and things like that. That's going to be one uh, area of benefit. I, I don't know if you know the Wilcoxes, a few folks in that neck of the woods know them at all. They've got a house full of the most <laughs> wonderful dogs you ever saw in your life. Big dogs. Uh, big dogs. <laughs> big dogs, but, but great dogs. And, uh, and so this is something near and dear to their hearts. Uh, but there will be other beneficiaries as far as this concert is concerned as well. And so the donation at the door is, uh, it could be $10 or it could be whatever you want it to be. Uh, 
to help uh, generate some funds for these worthy causes. And if you don't know what we're talking about, what they've installed in the firehouse is a great big theater pipe organ. And these were instruments that, like a church pipe organ, need wind pressure and pipes. And uh, you take a look at this thing, and there, there's plexiglass. You can see right into the whole mechanism. And it's mind-boggling. What makes the theater organ special is it was built to be a unit orchestra. And so there was a real glockenspiel, there was a real xylophone, real chimes, uh, a real marimba, all of these real instruments of the orchestra that play through the keyboard at the determination of the organist as to when he wants it to play. We who play theater organ get to play Nelson Riddle because we also are the arranger and the conductor determining when we want all of these different instruments to play. And uh, it's an amazing amalgamation of music, sound, sound effects because they were built to make music for silent film uh, and uh, and at the same time uh, uh, an unbelievable uh, collection of pieces and parts and bits this is the tinkerer's dream um, a Rube Goldberg operation if there ever was one that makes these theater organs play and Dick Wilcox in his connection with the theater organ he creates computer relay systems that are actually the functioning mechanism that when the organist plays the relay system sends the signals to whatever pipes or sound need to play and he has digitized this operation and is one of the leaders in the world in uh, presenting this kind of technology for the theater organ it, uh, uh, it's an amazing and very rare combination and I think for, to a layman like myself um, the, the, the relays that he builds uh, really is evolving the theater organ into keeping its its real purpose, the way it really operated, but replacing all those worn out things that are that are difficult to replace from, from olden days. Isn't yes. that true? Imagine and it into a an old telephone switching system where the operator is plugging all of these things in. Well, the, the old theater organ relay system was akin to that. And now, because of the computer, it can provide so much more flexibility. And for example, one thing it can do, you can record into the computer, and the computer will spit the organ back. Not a tape recording of what you've done, but the computer can actually play the organ. And so there are some places where uh, they'll take tours of the theater, mm -hmm. and because of this relay system, they can have the organ playing. If they can't find an organist, they can punch a button, and they can still demonstrate the organ. So these, these relay systems that uh, Dick Wilcox uh, constructs, Uniflex 3000 is the name of the company, uh, they are a modern-day miracle that keeps these 1920s instruments playing. That's just, it's fascinating, and Dick and Linda do so much for the community, and uh, this the, I, that's why I was so happy to be able to do this show with you, and I'm, I'm glad you agreed to do it, because uh, I hope just a huge crowd turns out, uh, not only for the, the charities that are going to be benefited, but in appreciation of Dick and Linda and what they've done for the community, because one thing I learned here in Atlanta, and in my enjoyment of the theater organ, is that Theater organs are anything but dead. People are enjoying. They love to go, and they come in by the crowds to the different events here. And I really see that sometime down the road, this could be the case for Union City as well. People would enjoy coming and actually being in that kind of position where they could actually walk up and even touch the organ or see through the louvers how the, the back end of it works mm -hmm. and everything. I have the privilege of being the president of an organization called the American Theater Organ Society, ATOS. We've been around since 1955, and our job is to try and preserve and present these instruments. And we have chapters all around the country, also in Great Britain and New Zealand and Australia and Canada. And um, there is a group uh, in central Indiana, headquartered kind of in Indianapolis, but it's the central Indiana chapter of ATOS. And uh, our organization and the instrument is a little bit of the best kept secret in music. And we need to see what we can do to introduce more people to the theater organ because when it's demonstrated and presented properly and well, people like it. Mm -hmm. They used to flock by the thousands every week to the Paramount Music Palace. There's a place in Mesa, Arizona where they still do, Organ Stop Pizza. Uh, if it's presented with a half hour of music before a movie or before a concert as they do here at the Atlanta Fox, um, and again, if it's played well and presented well, the audiences love it. And so what we need to do is get more audience 
to enjoy the theater organ, and in their own little way, in lovely Union City, Indiana, Dick and Linda Wilcox are doing just that. Yep, and you know, I told you before we started the program, uh, as I ended my career at school before I moved down here, uh, I had uh, six or seven, eight guys in my class that we went over and helped the Wilcoxes unload their semi. And even though those young men weren't interested so much in the music that was being played on the organ, they became absolutely fascinated with the technique and how it worked, and they followed that all the way through the, the construction. And, and they absolutely loved it. So there's a, there's a new audience in another way, and those same guys couldn't wait to hear it when it finally came online and was able to, to play. So so it is fascinating. But uh, and you'll be able to uh, see. I'll put a screen up at the end of the program, telling you where and how you can get your tickets and what time the program is and everything. But um, the, the the firehouse pipes. I would just a little bit more because you've seen the organ and you've played it. This is kind of a masterpiece in itself, isn't it? Because this is, Dick calls it his Frankenstein. I don't think that's a fair term. <laughs> but it's, it's, it's pieces and parts of different organs, and he, and he pulled the people together to put this all together. Yes, and uh, he did this once before. When, uh, when they lived in Seattle, uh, they lived in a beautiful home, big home, and he had a great big, huge, gorgeous pipe organ in that house. Um, they then moved uh, away and then subsequently moved to Indiana and he decided through the firehouse to go ahead and do another organ. And he does use it as the experimental basis for new innovations for the computer relay systems. So to that end, he is Frankenstein and the organ is a little bit of his monstrous creation. But um, uh, the, the flip side of the coin is it's a wonderful instrument. The basic part of the instrument is a page pipe organ. This was a company headquartered in Lima, Ohio. And for example, the big organ at the Embassy Theater in Fort Wayne is a page organ. It's got four keyboards like this one has, one, two, three, four. Uh, and um, the organ at the Anderson Paramount Theater is a page organ, and it has three keyboards, not four. And the one at the Firehouse is a page organ that has three keyboards and equivalent to about 15 sets of pipes. Each set of pipes makes a specific sound from the orchestra, a string, a flute, a clarinet. And that clarinet, for example, has to have at least 61 pipes because there are 61 notes on the keyboard. So you do the math, you can find out how many pipes he's got in that pipe organ, and uh, keeping it in tune, uh, it goes out of tune not unlike a piano. So a couple, maybe three times a year, the tuners have to come in and whip it into shape. Um, and then all of these other amazing components, the xylophones and the marimbas and the bells and the, the drums and castanets and tambourines, all of these are part of the theater organ. My job, come concert time on Friday, December the 6th, is to create an evening of music that is a broad spectrum of music. And it's the best thing when people ask, well, what kind of music do you play? Generally speaking, the theater organ does not necessarily do Bach and Handel and the serious music that you might hear at a church recital. The theater organ is much more showy and much more in tune with a Boston Pops types concert. So you might hear a Sousa March, you might hear a Broadway medley of tunes, you might hear a Strauss waltz. Uh, certainly we're going to play some Christmas and holiday music uh, for this and uh, because the organ is orchestral in nature it makes these things work just magnificently and makes for a much different experience uh, and it's much more of a show rather than a recital so hopefully that might answer that question what kind of music are we going to hear for example we need a little christmas comes from the show main so i'm going to do some music from the broadway show main julius fuchik who wrote entry of the gladiators that's ba -ba -ba -da 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 the circus music he wrote a thing called winter storms which i think is relatively appropriate we're hoping we don't have any while we're there but um, it is a strauss like waltz piece that uh, is very uh, orchestral in nature and uh, then we'll do we'll do a thing we'll let there be peace on earth and we can make the organ sound like a church organ and uh, so a wonderful variety of different types of popular music will be played on that friday okay very good and i i knew when we started the program that this program could go anywhere we wanted it to go mm -hmm. and I think what we will do if you'd like to do this is uh, we'll take a little break here and we'll show you all about your tickets the the program and the charities will be involved here for a second and we'll come back and I'll get behind the camera and let's show the people a little bit you started to explain and turned around to the organ let's show them a little bit on your organ what what happens and, and sure. how these work okay yep. before we do that though real quick what's the difference between 
your organ, and we're going to leave it a mystery on how you got this in to your yes. home. But um, what's the difference between an electronic theater organ and and one the real the, McCoy, the, the real McCoy mm -hmm. with the pipes that, yes. that Dick has? This is as real as it gets, though, right here. Oh yeah. So, so is, what's uh, what's that yeah. difference? Uh, this is an organ built by the Allen Organ Company out of McCungy, Pennsylvania, and um, it is it's, it's all digital. So that there are 16 rather sizable speakers that are upstairs in my townhouse in Atlanta. Fortunately, there are six-inch concrete firewalls between every unit, so the neighbors don't hear it, thank heaven. Even if I'm inspired at 2.30 in the morning, I can come down and play if I want to. Anyway, uh, there are 16 speakers that, uh, through the magic of Alan's voicing work, uh, make this organ sound very much like a theater pipe organ. With the firehouse organ, firehouse pipes, uh, there aren't any speakers. So that clarinet stop is made by those 61 pipes, the flute stop is made by the flute pipes, um, the marimba, the glockenspiel, those are the actual instruments. So um, if, if I wanted the real pipe organ here, I would have to move out into the garden because there would be no room for anything else except all the pipes and the components that make the organ play. Uh, at the firehouse, they're in a great big huge room, kind of separated left side and right side. Here I've got 16 speakers spread around the ceiling, so to speak, uh, speaking into the highest part of the room. So the, the digital imitations are wonderful because they allow people who couldn't otherwise experience the theater organ have it. They're great. This one, I love it, but it ain't the real thing, and, there's, <laughs> and never will be, as far as I'm concerned. So this is why it's great to be able to go to Union City and uh, play the page organ at the at the firehouse. Okay, very good. Well, we're going to take a little break and let you know exactly how you can get your tickets and when the concert is. And while you're taking a look at that, we'll uh, reassemble the uh, camera here a little bit, and we'll take a look at this organ and see a little bit what a theater organ is actually all about. So stay tuned. We'll be right back. And we're back now. I've taken my place behind the camera, and we're going to let Ken show us a little bit about a theater organ and all of its remarkable capabilities. I wrote a piece for our American Theater Organ Society journal a while back and detailed about 17 different functions that are going on in the brain of a theater organist in terms of making music. The first is, what are, what are all these things? They're called stops, and they are gathered according to keyboard. So, for example, the solo plays here. The orchestral, the stops are here and that plays this keyboard. The great is around here and that plays here. The accompaniment is around here and then there's the pedal playing the, the bass notes. What do the numbers mean? You can see the 16s and the 8s and the 4s. Middle C on the piano, we'll put it on the solo, is that middle C and it plays the same middle C that the piano stop plays. So that's the 8 foot pitch. The four foot pitch would be an octave higher. So where would we find a four foot piano by doing that? Same piano, but an octave higher. 16 foot is an octave lower. So that's what the numbers mean, 16, eight, and four. So if you had orchestral strings, for example, there's an eight foot string, which would be the viola. The violins would be at that pitch, and the bass strings cellos and bass would be there. So there is 16, 8, and 4 foot string. And in the pipe organ, that's a very narrow metal pipe. And the littlest one, the highest pitch, is about the size of my index finger. The biggest one can be 16 feet long. And uh, so that's what the numbers mean. There is the separation. And so what we're doing is combining these different stops to make different sounds and that's what all these buttons are about. Watch what happens when I press this. A whole bunch of stops all around the organ are activated and these are determined by what I wanted to have on that particular sound. So this combination action helps us play 
because we want different sounds as we go. Just like the orchestra, sometimes it's the strings, sometimes it's the brass. Every once in a while, all you want is the ping of the glockenspiel or a run of the xylophone or the chrysoglots, a pretty bell or chime. All of those things are activated. Now again, on the theater pipe organ, that's a real glockenspiel, that's a real xylophone, real chimes hanging in the chamber. Here, it's a digital imitation of those voices. So, if I'm going to play a tune, I start punching these different buttons and I can get a nice quiet sound here. Or I can get a great big sound here. even with a roll symbol for the finish. Again, all of that determined by these different buttons and sounds and, and what makes it go. The final thing is making it louder and softer. On the digital organ, that's done like any other electronic instrument uh, or, or radio or television. There is a dial that you can increase or decrease volume. I control that with my right foot. So the left foot's playing bass just like a string bass player in, in a band. My right foot's controlling volume on these two pedals. They're like accelerator pedals. The farther I push them down, the louder it gets. On the theater pipe organ, it's different. The pipes all speak at their full volume. So as I'm activating that expression pedal, it's not wind pressure that's changing volume. There are Venetian blind-like devices called swell shades and they open and close as I move my right foot. And so when you go to the firehouse, they're plexiglass. You can see right through them and see all the pipes and everything in the chambers. And the farther I push down, the more of these things open. And as they open, it allows the sound to come into the room. A little bit of that Rube Goldberg operation we were talking about earlier. Uh, and it's fascinating to watch all that going on while the organist is playing up a storm uh, and, and realize all that has to take place to make music on the theater pipe organ, and uh, it makes it the most unique musical creation of them all. Well, that's fascinating how it all works, uh, Ken, and I know that I'm excited. By the way, I'm going to be back in Union City for this concert. I thought it was a great time to come up and, and visit with some folks, and I'm looking forward to hearing uh, uh, the Firehouse well, Pipe Organ as well. <laughs> no, but I, I'm really excited about it, so I hope to see a lot of my friends there as well also, but again, when you hear Ken play, uh, you're going to enjoy it. You're going to know you have uh, really uh, seen an excellent theater organ concert. <laughs> and all you've had to do is walk out of your house and, and come a couple blocks away uh, to the firehouse pipe. So it's, I know it's going to be a great evening. And uh, again, folks can actually there, you can, they can actually walk up to the organ and take a close look at it. it it's not like going to a theater where it's kept away or up on stage. So come on out, uh, enjoy a great start to the Christmas season of the Firehouse Pipes. And of course, when you come to Firehouse Pipes, uh, Dick and Linda always have uh, extra special little things going on. So I know you'll have a good evening and enjoy it with friends, and I look forward to seeing you as well. Ken, thank you for taking the time to uh, pleasure, tell us Rick. a little bit about uh, what you do and your playing and about your magnificent organ. I still wonder how you got it in. in Fortunately, this, this breaks down into three <laughs> pieces. So. Okay, so it, so it wasn't as, it was still a big job, wasn't it? But, uh, I supervised, trust me. Well, good. <laughs> <laughs> Supervision is a wonderful oh, thing. Yeah. Um, but anyway, could you take us out? Would you mind playing a little something? And, sure. and I'll run over behind the camera and uh, we'll give a little sample of, of what people are going to hear uh, come this, this Friday evening. And maybe something a little familiar to you all. Okay, very good. Here we go.